Welcome back to the channel and to another video. For today's video, I'm going to be discussing the top three J series slash Accord V6 mods, in my opinion, that you should do to maximize the power you get per how much money you spend. Um, it's going to be a good one. Uh, the, once again, remember this is all just my opinion and based on my experience, so maybe yours is a little bit different, but this is based on you know my power mods and what it put down on the dyno as a baseline uh there's still no tune so this is a decently accurate um estimation i guess on what kind of power you would get but um yeah before we get into the action make sure to comment like and subscribe to help the channel grow so that we can bring bigger and better content also you guys know that i always preach to warm up your cars and uh this video is no different so let's get this car warmed up all right, so we moved to a remote location uh, so that we don't get bothered by anyone. It's pretty quiet, I hope, but um, for when you first think about mods for a car, <laughs> when you, sorry, my little brother's filming, it's dumb. Um, oh shit, is someone coming? <laughs> yeah. All right, so there might be like slight interruptions. Some workers may be coming to this industrial area, but anyways, when you uh, first think about modding a car, um, a lot of people think about pushing the most amount of power, which makes sense. Um, but an alternative way to look at it is if you kind of tackle the areas that are that are the most restrictive. And on the J series, um, there are three areas where I think it's the most restrictive, and that's where I'm going to be centering this whole video around. Um, just to break it down, um, like in this from the start, the top three areas that I think are the most restrictive. Um, it's going to be the pri uh, the primary cats or what they call the pre-cats. Um, the exhaust system is definitely one of the most ex uh, restrictive areas. And then I'm going to say um, the runners. Maybe not. Those actually are not the most restrictive. It just has an area where you're going to lock a lot of power. Uh, but those are the three top mods just as a summary that I suggest you to do for you to maximize your power benefit with the amount of money that you spend. Right here you can see that I have modified the primary slash pre-cats. Um, this is actually a high flow pre-cat which is not quite as unrestricted as the uh, pre-cat deletes. Um, I have it from RV6 and um, I highly highly recommend. Uh, this is definitely one of the most restricted areas um, honestly when you're talking about modifying, especially when it comes to emissions slash exhaust, um, you're going to want to mess with the cats. Um, I know it's illegal uh, technically in California, but um, that's where you're going to find most of your gains. Uh, the pre-cats alone, I think, give about 8 to 10 wheel horsepower and then maybe 8 to 12 wheel torque. Um, that is based on their dyno sheets. Um, I cannot say how much it directly added because I did add a bunch of mods before I even baseline dyno tuned the car But as you can see it's right here. There's another one like in the rear section of the engine like below But you can't see it unless you're under the car. So we're gonna have to settle with this one But yes, like I said um, You definitely need to get either high flow pre-cats or pre-cat deletes that will free up about 10 wheel horsepower and 10 wheel torque i do not regret it at all and um this i think this one can i think if you buy it alone i think it's like 500 i'm not sure but uh you're gonna have to double check me there but um yeah it was really good i would say the pre-cats help in the low and mid range so the next mod um it's gonna be in this general area because you're talking we were talking about the ported runners from p2r um these are basically gonna help you in the mid to top end. And uh, I would say these give you roughly 10 wheel, 10 wheel torque, maybe a little bit more, I'm not sure. Um, like I said, it, I can only go based off their dyno sheets. Um, it could be a little bit higher, uh, I might not recall uh, correctly, but it definitely helps distribute the power curve um, more from the middle and and top end so it moves it a little bit higher um, you definitely feel it more so especially when VTEC engages um, but yeah the Porter runners are a must um, it does help with the airflow um, of the engine of course you 
in an ideal world you would want to also mess with the lower um, the lower part of the runners I may do that depending on how crazy I go with this build uh, but as you can see I only have the porter runners and everything else stock even the manifold the throttle body the intake but yeah I do highly recommend the P2R ported runners um, they do help a lot with moving up the power uh, power curve and um, it just feels way better once I did um, red line pulls I could feel it pulling stronger in the top end and um, the dyno sheets definitely show a power increase but yeah this is another one I would recommend so for the ported runners that's gonna run you about 350 um, P2R is a really cool company and maybe if you tell them that I sent you they can give you a slight discount because I do work with them and um, I've collaborated with them before so um, it runs about 350 but let them know I sent you and then let's see if they'll work out some kind of deal and if they don't you could personally DM me and then I could see if I could work something in but yeah um, it's gonna come out to 350 um, so with the pre cats and um, the Porter runners you can expect about 20 wheel horsepower gain 20 wheel torque um, but yeah let's move on to the exhaust starting off at the side of the car because for the exhaust um, the main component starts around here like in this area because it's the J pipe so the J series doesn't have headers except for the J32 and I think I don't know if there's any other J series that have the header design but I know the J32 does but for the other J series that do not have headers in place of that I guess you have a J pipe um, that has the third cat um, attached to it so deleting that cat would free up a lot of power I would say in the eight wheel horsepower range and then eight wheel horse uh, wheel torque um, area so around here is where um, the J pipe would land underneath the car I have the RV6 J pipe there's also ATLP um, I think those are the main the main options for uh, the Accord V6 but for J series there definitely are different other ones um, maybe PLM I think but anyways as we move a little bit further along the exhaust I did modify all the resonators on here I don't have any mufflers only resonators uh, from Vibrant um, shout out to them because we did do a collab with them uh, for the exhaust system so it's full Vibrant uh, but I have three resonators. I have the ultra quiet resonator, a large bottle style resonator, and then my exhaust tip I'm using is also a bottle style resonator. But um, I am not too sure what replacing the resonators do for power. Um, I mainly did that for sound. Uh, but my, my uh, exhaust system is definitely way less restrictive because the stock exhaust had like like three mufflers or so muffler slash resonator i'm not sure the difference um in the stock design at least but um yeah so my exhaust system's pretty straight through um i do have resonators to delete rasp because um the pre-cats and the um j pipe will in introduce a lot of rasp to the system so i have three resonators all from vibrant all really well really good um the exhaust system from the J-pipe all the way to the back, assuming you modified everything, I think would come out to maybe 12 to 15 wheel horsepower and then maybe 10 wheel torque, uh, just because it's a huge part of the system and it's really restrictive. Not to mention, on top of it being restrictive, um, modifying your exhaust also helps with the weight reduction because uh, the stock exhaust is pretty heavy. And I went with a single exit myself, so that saves even more weight because I only have one exit. But um, all the aftermarket exhaust system should be lighter, at least by a little bit. So that helps out in all ways. And uh, yeah, let's look at the back to see the exhaust tip. Um, I went with a resonator style um, exit. Kind of, I'm kind of taking a book out of the Subaru page uh, because, as you can tell, it kind of looks like what Subarus do except like a smaller version because I know they usually have like huge ones like five inch um, outlets but like yeah kind of took a page out of that book um, I like the look and I was just thinking it would be unique and yeah so those would be my top three mods that every J series slash Accord V6 owner should um, should do 
based on my based on the stock numbers from the forum the accord v6 this one at least the manual version of it um, puts down about 230 to 235 wheel horsepower stock and then it puts down about 210 wheel torque um, my car is a little older so i don't know if it may be put down that exact number but i've seen stock numbers around there and uh, my car put down 260 wheel and then 248 wheel torque um, we did three dyno runs uh, i have the dyno video as well um, uploaded so you could check that out but if we're using the stock baseline numbers uh, i put about another 30 wheel increase uh, from stock and then about about like is it 30 260 okay so 30 or 25 wheel and then um let's see for the torque i put another 20 or 35 i'd say like because it's 210 to 215 but yeah um these mods all together if you only do these mods and you do it once and uh not like you don't keep switching out the exhaust just like i did i think you can get away with these mods for about 1500 maybe maybe a little bit less so 1500 for 25 to 30 wheel horsepower and then 20 to 25 wheel torque i think that's a really solid solid gain for the price LEDs and this is actually gonna be a HID to LED conversion because why not and so we're gonna be doing on a 1999 Ford F250 compare the assemblies so this is the whole HID assembly so we'll, we'll compare it to what the LEDs look like so now we have the all-new Basla LEDs take a look oh also uh we opened it just to make sure they're right so that's why it's not in fully in place <laughs> so uh basically this is the assembly compared to that so the box is a lot smaller i don't even know what the box is for but you know adapter or whatever and you could just tell straight up like this is more simplistic all you have to do is put this in, plug it into here, and then this connects to there. But this has three different plugs. You got to figure it out and whatnot. So I would recommend these ones. And Bosla makes really good products. I have them on my Miata, and they're amazing. So let's get these installed. Yeah! Took a little bit of a learning curve on that side. But basically, I figured out that you need this. And so basically, what you want to do is... Take it off of this like this. There's grooves. Or, yeah. I can just pull it through like this. It's pretty big, so. Pull it through. Pull it through. This is the old HID. Put it over here. And for the new one, what you want to do is just take the bulb. And then you want to put it in first so you you basically get it in as much as you can there's this rubber grommet that holds it in place for you so you do that put the bulb in first so as you guys can see it's not that hard to install and uh the the uh brightness has enhanced quite a bit <laughs> thank you Basla, for the headlights and Make sure to buy some from them because they have some quality headlights. Like no, no joke about that. Like super easy to install, super simple, and high quality. So uh, this one also has the Boslas. If you didn't catch it in the last video that we did the the install on. So uh, the cool thing about this, it has three different light modes that you just switch by uh, turning on and off your headlights. So this is the first mode. It's just white. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Now it's a hybrid of a. Uh, it's like a bright yellow and then this is straight yellow super cool hopefully you guys like the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and if you like the content make sure to 
consider being a member, but I'll see you in the next upload.